Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce thermal evaporation, which is a versatile fabrication technique used to deposit thin films of metals, metal oxides, and other semiconductor materials. And then we're going to deposit silver electrodes onto perovskite solar cells. How does an evaporator deposit material? Substrates are suspended from the top of a chamber, and subsequently, the chamber is evacuated to a pressure of 10 to the minus 6 torr. Then, a source containing the material of interest is heated to create a vapor that deposits material onto the substrates. Layers with thicknesses ranging from 1 to hundreds of nanometers can be deposited. In addition, substrates themselves can be masked such that two-dimensional patterns can be fabricated. Our thermal evaporator is located inside of a nitrogen glove box that prevents exposure of any samples to oxygen or water, which can degrade some photovoltaic materials and affect solar cell performance. Before using the evaporator, we first confirm there is sufficient nitrogen in the doer supporting the glove box, and we also ensure that the oxygen water levels are low. Currently, the chamber is under vacuum and must be vented using the software to open the door. Small volumes of nitrogen are introduced to the turbo pump to slow it down in a controlled manner. This decreases the vacuum the pump is pulling out of the chamber. After a couple of minutes, the evaporator begins filling with pulses of nitrogen from the box until atmosphere pressure is achieved. Upon reaching ambient pressure, we can open the door and begin loading sources and substrates into the chamber. First, let's load our silver. Note there are four different sources to evaporate materials in the chamber. Each source is covered by a shield that rotates out of the way during evaporation. First, we'll install the boat that will hold the silver. In this case, we will use a tungsten boat because of the high melting point, low vapor pressure at elevated temperatures, high tensile strength, and low coefficient of thermal expansion of tungsten. You can also see there is already a bit of silver left over from previous evaporations. To install the boat, remove the source shield and loosen the boat clips. Place the boat in the middle of the source and then tighten the clips by hand. Now, we can load silver material onto the boat. In this case, we'll load two silver pellets onto the boat because each silver pellet is good for about 50 to 60 nanometers of silver. After loading the silver pellets, we make sure to install the source shield back into place, and now we can load our substrates. First, each solar cell must be placed face down in this mask that defines the silver electrode pattern. We use this mask so we can test different parts of the cell in case any areas are short circuited. The mask is placed into the substrate holder, which in turn is suspended from three pins at the top of the chamber. Note there are a couple shutters that will open during the deposition. Before we pump down, I'd like to point out there are two quartz crystal microbalance sensors that measure the rate of material deposited. This sensor is calibrated by measuring film thickness with a profilometer after evaporation. Anyways, after loading substrates and all deposition materials, the door is closed and the chamber is pumped down to 10 to the minus 6 torr. 
Now, I'm going to begin the recipe by clicking the green start button in the upper right corner of the screen. Since the chamber is already pumped down, we skip the pump down step, meaning the stage will start to lower. If you watch the metal box closely, you can see the stage is lowering. Now that the stage is lowered, we have entered the preconditioned phase. We can see there are three graphs on the screen. The top one shows deposition rate versus time, the middle one shows power versus time, and the bottom one shows the percent rate deviation versus time. During this phase, we're going to hold the power constant at 21% for a couple of minutes. We can see that the rate of deposition has increased to about 1.5, 1.6 angstroms per second. Now we have transitioned from the preconditioned phase to the stabilized phase, as denoted by the vertical lines in all three graphs. The computer has automatically increased the power to 21.3% to increase the deposition rate to 2 angstroms per second. After stabilizing the evaporation at this rate for 10 consecutive seconds, we transition to the deposit phase, meaning the shutters will open and silver will begin depositing onto the substrates. The recipe will remain in this phase until the target thickness of 100 nanometers is achieved. Now we have entered the post condition phase upon depositing 100 nanometers of silver, meaning that the shutters have closed and the power is ramping down to zero. Correspondingly, the deposition rate is decreasing to zero. Upon finishing the post condition step, the stage will raise back to the top of the chamber and then the chamber will be vented. Once venting is completed, we'll remove the substrates from the sample holder. We can see that the silver layer is reflective on all substrates, indicating the thermal evaporation was a success. Thank you for watching this introductory video on using a thermal evaporator for solar cell fabrication.